So Elisa Rich, again, she's with Wolf Eagle Environmental. She's led over 85 air quality studies in the Barnett Shale, as y'all know, which is in North Texas, and the Bakken Shale, Montana and North Dakota. Elisa tests air, water, and soil quality in shale plays across the country. And Elisa completed the first analysis of air quality in Dish, Texas, a town featured in the Academy Award winning documentary, Gasland. Um, and so without further ado, um, let's give a warm welcome to Elisa Rich. Thank you. I'm really pleased to be down here again. I happen to have already been tromped through this area once because of a previous natural gas situation. And today what I'm here to tell you about is what happens after they, they leave. I get to come in and I get to assess the situation and uh, usually wind up with mud everywhere in order to figure this out, unless it happens to be this kind of season, and we are definitely dry. I'm really thrilled to be here with Stephen and David and Lee. I want to, I want to compliment all of them, especially Halbert, because they're, the new technologies that they're using, I am very, very embracing of. I do not disagree with natural gas. I do disagree with poisoning our children. Uh, that leads me to what we're talking about today, and that is, specifically I was asked to talk about some of the air emissions. I will discuss briefly some of the water issues that we're getting into, but since air emissions are a very strong component of natural gas production, I wanted to give you a glimpse of what we've seen in the Barnett. It's a very similar situation to what you're going to see here, and it's a redundant situation in the other place as well that's happening. This is not selective. This is not only going on in Eagle. This is going on all over the country to different degrees of different pollution. And that's what we have to start looking at. It is, without a doubt, a world industry. It is not exclusive to our area or to Texas. But hopefully we'll learn from some of the things that we happened in the Barnett. And I'm totally thrilled over the new products that uh, Halliburton's coming out with. Um, although we're still going to have a little disagreement on those pro pro the uh, proprietary compounds that they're not uh, <laughs> going to tell us about yet. But that's okay. That's okay. We'll get there. And I do encourage you all to go to fracfocus.org. It will wake you up to a whole lot of stuff. Uh, do I have my cowman here? I want you to know I'm fifth generation cowwoman. Despite the blonde hair, I know how to get out and ride a horse, okay? And I'm more comfortable in cowboy boots than I am heels most of the time. So this is the Barnett shell. What you're looking at here is actually from 2010. There are red dots, there are blue dots, and there are green dots. And that represents the red are gas wells, the blue are permits that had not yet drilled. In this one area of nine counties, we have all, all, over 13,000 wells drilled at this point, or permitted. A few green dots are the oil wells. What we have are different processes that produce emissions. I want you to look at these and I want you to be clear about them because you're going to be seeing them out. And so you're going to recognize them and you're going to say, aha, this is normal, aha, this is not normal. And this is the key. Production is based on quality producers. Some people are quality producers, as Halliburton, some people are not. So my, my, my landowners, is up to you to police your own land. That is what you're going to hear from me over and over again. And I hate to say this, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. So one of the sources of emissions that we have are what we call intermittent emissions. Uh, these are from the initial stage drilling, hydrofracturing, well completion, and pressure relief events that are not exactly intermittent. But pressure release events happen a lot. Uh, we qualify the different stages because at different points you're going to have different volumes of emissions, and I think that's important. So this is what we call the initial. Now, one comment here. When we talk about an intermittent and a temporary, be aware that when you're talking about one pad site with 32 wells, you're going to have 32 times that that thing is going to get drilled in order to put a well in the ground. And then they have to come back and re-stimulate them. So the intermittent rig that's near my house doesn't seem to go away. It seems to be there an awful lot. Go ahead. Then we have continuous point sources. And the continuous point sources 
are the compressors that are stationary on your property that sound a little bit <clears throat> loud late at night. And the um, tanks that are there. A real good average is you have one well, you generally have two tanks. You have two wells, you generally have four tanks and a compressor. Now, I realize it depends on how much water is coming out of there. What, I, I happen to bring this picture because I happen to like this picture a lot. You can see the good quality tanks in that center. Um, the tank to the left, it's a little hard to see, but at the very top there's a net. To the side where it says 2009, that's the top of the tank. The tank blew off in a pressure event, and they are actually violating the Migratory Bird Act. So they had to put a netting over the top of the tank because the tank no longer has a lid, and it's legal like that because they don't violate the Migratory Bird Act because the birds were swimming in there and they're not supposed to swim in there. Um, but it still pollutes the individuals, but that's not a violation. Next. <laughs> and then we've got the continuous fugitive sources, and these are the ones that they leak. I mean, this is a combustion process. Get in your mind that this is much like your engine in your car. You've got leaky valves, you've got leaky all sorts of flanges, valves, everything like that. It's going to leak. Eventually it's going to leak. If you don't do something to your car, you're going to have the same situation happen. That's what happens here. So a lot of these couplings and these valves and these uh, flanges de uh, degradate over time. They have to be replaced. If you've got a good operator, the operator replaces and keeps the stuff working pretty well. Next. So. The chemicals I'm talking about, because my, my spoke focus here is chemicals. What chemicals are we going to be as, as, uh, exposed to? And we're going to go into actually what chemicals will do to you, which is even funner. So the chemicals are basically three categories. They are the natural gas product. You're talking about methane, ethane, ethane, butane, propanes, all the ANES. Um, there's sulfur compounds that are associated, which are carbon sulfide, carbonyl sulfide. I've got about 15 different sulfides that come out of my air emissions. Uh, there are varying kinds depending on all sorts of things. And then we have the VOCs, which you keep hearing the VOCs. BTEX, with capital B, capital T, E, X, is basically benzene, toluene, ethyl benzene, and xylene. These are not your friends, but you're going to hear a whole lot about them. They are emissions that come from a combustion process. Um, and there are many different kinds of, uh, well, methyl benzene is just, I'm sorry, toluene is just a methyl benzene. So we're going to get into a little chemistry class. It means it has a methyl arm like this. You get into some of these other compounds like 135-trimethylbenzene, it kind of looks like that. You know, 124 kind of looks like this. All right, they're all a benzene product. They're not necessarily good for you. Again, this is one of those things where you're talking about chemicals. Concentration is key.